Hello everyone, welcome to another webinar promoted by SoftExpert. Today's event introduces the webinar ISO 27001 Implementation – How to Make It Easier Using ISO 9001. The webinar will be conducted by Dayan Kosatic. He is an approved tutor for ISMS Lead Auditor and has extensive working experience both as tutor and as a consultant. I wish you all a great webinar. Uh, thank you for this introduction and uh, hello to hello uh, uh, to all of you who have logged into this uh, webinar today. Okay, so uh, in this webinar today, I'll speak about uh, how to use ISO 9001, the, the quality management standard, to make your ISO 27001, uh, the information security standard uh, uh, implementation, easier, let's say, or, or less uh, painful. Um, so uh, the so basically, uh, the, this webinar today uh, is intended for people that have implemented already ISO 9001, and now that are planning to implement uh, uh, ISO 27001, or basically if you are planning to uh, implement both of these uh, standards uh, at the same same time. Uh, and the um, uh, focus of uh, today's webinars will be on how to combine uh, these two standards. Uh, rather than going into details of implementation of, of each of these. So uh, I'm not going to you know, explain you what are the steps in implementation of ISO 27001 because there, there, are the, there are other webinars that explain this. Uh, I'm going to explain you how to combine these two standards uh, uh, so that they actually, so that you create a kind of an integrated uh, management system. Okay, so uh, if you already implemented ISO 9001 uh, or you're planning to implement uh, uh, both uh, 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 9001 and 27001, uh, what is actually uh, good is that uh, in most cases you can actually save up to a quarter of your implementation time when you go for uh, 27001. Uh, because as you will see, uh, uh, these standards, I mean, although they, they cover different topics like quality management and information security management, uh, even though they're, they're let's say, very different, uh, different at the first glance, they actually have uh, a much uh, much more uh, similar things that uh, it might seem at, at the first uh, uh, at the first time aside um, you know and when i when i talk to companies who already uh, implemented iso 9001 and are uh, and are now just starting their uh, iso 27001 uh, and you know sometimes these companies start this uh, iso 27001 as a, as a completely separate project you know they they use different people different documentation uh, everything is unrelated to iso 9001 and then i tell them look you're you're wasting your time you're you're wasting your money because there are some things from ISO 9001 that you can use for uh, ISO 27001. And this is exactly what I'll show you uh, in today's webinar. Good, now, um, so the, let's start first with the agenda. So the agenda for, for the webinar today, uh, I'll show you the similarities between these two standards, uh, then I'll show you the differences. Uh, then I'll show you, I'll, I'll speak about uh, a little bit about uh, implementation issues and roles in the implementation. What are some important uh, top management issues you have to be aware of? Uh, how to implement both standards at the same time or in parallel? Uh, a little bit about certification or integrated certification. And finally, what are the greatest challenges with uh, ISO 27001? And this great, uh, this latest uh, um, topic here will be actually based on, on the inputs uh, that you actually sent, uh, sent me uh, by email. And I did receive quite many of your emails. And, and thank you for this. Okay, very well. Uh, let's move on to my next uh, slide. Uh, so, uh, first of all, very briefly, what are the actually similar similarities between ISO 9001 and ISO 27001? So, uh, first of all, uh, both of these standards are actually actually based on this uh, uh, philosophy or, or let's say uh, method uh, methodology of PDCA cycle. PDCA actually stands for Plan to Check and Act. So, wh what does this really mean? So, first of all, in the plan phase, you have to define what you want to achieve. And uh, uh, for quality management here, you're defining some top-level um, objectives, uh, uh, the, the top-level uh, quality policy, um, uh, these kind of things. But information security also defines the top-level objectives and uh, uh, top-level information security policy. You also perform the risk management, which you will see is, is a crucial part of uh, ISO 27001. There is a kind of a risk management in ISO 9001, but it doesn't have really this big significance as, as, as it does in 27001. 
Now, in the do phase, uh, uh, this is uh, where you actually implement everything you, you have planned for. Uh, so in uh, quality management, you here you uh, implement or document at least all the, um, uh, all the core procedures, operating procedures for let's say, let's say sales, production, these kind of things. Whereas in information security, you actually implement all the controls, security controls. And these controls can be technical, like you know, you start to do the backup, uh, or it, they can be organizational, or or you know, in some other ways. So, for instance, you can write a procedure about the backup. Um, so the uh, check phase uh, is where you actually measure if you have achieved the objectives. So let's say that you have uh, stated certain objectives uh, for implementation of a certain process. Now here in the check phase, you start measure, measuring if you really achieved this objective. Because uh, uh, the, the whole idea of the management is really knowing if you're doing the right thing. And so how are you going to know if you're not measuring? So the idea really, when you measure something, then you know whether you have to uh, correct it or not. And basically this correction part is called ACT uh, in this uh, PDCA cycle. And this is where you fill the gap. So let's say that uh, your certain process is underperforming uh, by, let's say, 20% uh, by your system of measurement, by, by some kind of KPI that you're using. So in this uh, ACT phase, you have to, have to figure out uh, uh, how to actually correct this uh, process uh, and, and uh, achieve this uh, uh, additional 20% to meet this, this objective. Uh, so these four phases uh, are, I mean, uh, the same uh, so, so the, this logic is the same for both of these standards. Uh, now, of course, uh, the let's say risk management for 27001 is very different from 9001. Uh, the implementation of controls for 27001 is very different from uh, uh, from the uh, uh, implementation or document documenting these core operating procedures uh, uh, procedures in 9001. However, many other things are very similar. Uh, for instance, the the uh, check phase is all about internal audit, management review, uh, uh, monitoring and measuring. And these things are very, very similar in uh, both of these standards. The ACT phase uh, is about uh, corrective actions, continu continual improvement. And these things are very, very similar in both of these standards. Uh, the plan phase itself uh, has a part of it uh, where you set the objectives and, and write the top level uh, 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 policy. Again, these are very similar things. So. I'm trying to tell you or describe you here how using this PDCA cycle, you can actually find many similarities uh, between these two uh, standards. And later on, I'll, I'll go through these uh, similarities and differences in more detail. So uh, uh, let's continue here. So what is similar is this uh, process approach. Uh, so process approach basically means that uh, your management system uh, consists actually of several processes, processes which uh, uh, um, depend uh, one uh, upon, uh, which are inter interdependent. So you have the, uh, let's say, output of uh, one process, which is the uh, actually input into some other process. And, uh, uh, you know, th this kind of, uh, um, let's say, uh, this kind of uh, uh, um, interdependence is something that exists in, in both uh, standards. So, so for instance, you might have an incident as a process and as, as an output of this incident, you will have uh, an input into the corrective action uh, uh, process. So, you know, these kind of connections uh, exist actually in, uh, in both of these uh, standards. Now, the second similarity is uh, the document control. So both of these standards require you to define exactly who, who can approve the new documents, who needs to review them, uh, where are they published, uh, how are they distributed, how are they withdrawn, these kind of things. So uh, actually the requirements in both of these standards are the same. Uh, so what does this mean? This means that actually when you uh, uh, write uh, a procedure for document control, you can actually use one and the same procedure for both of these standards. You do not need to have two uh, procedure for, uh, procedures for document control, you know, the one for 27,001 and the other one for 9,001. It doesn't make sense. You use only one procedure. S same thing for corrective actions. Again, you can use one and the same document uh, for both of these standards because the requirements are, again, exactly the same. Uh, uh, similar thing with human resources management. You need to, to set which kind of competencies you need 
uh, for, of course, your security or for your uh, quality management. Uh, and then you have to, uh, let's say, measure the gap between your existing competencies and what your, what are your desired competencies, and then you have to fill the gap. So this you know, same principle exists in both of these standards. Now, of course, the, the competencies needed for quality and for information security are different, but the whole principle, the whole uh, human resources management cycle or procedure or, or process actually is the same. So you can, again, use the same procedure or the same process for managing your uh, human resources or, or to actually building, uh, build up your competencies. Internal audit, the same thing. The, the requirements in both of these standards are the same. You can use the same procedure. Uh, now, of course, in most cases, you will use different auditors, I mean, internal auditors, uh, for doing the QMS audit uh, versus ISMS audit. However, if you have an internal auditor who is, uh, uh, of course, the experienced in ISO 9001, but who is also knowledgeable about ISO 27001, uh, then actually you can use the same auditor to do both 9001 and 27001 internal audits at the same time. So you can even even more uh, save time if if uh, uh, if you can do this kind of uh, let's say integration of of internal audit. Uh, management review. Uh, the requirements are I would say similar between the standards, not completely the same, uh, but the logic uh, is uh, uh, again more or less similar. So you have certain inputs uh, that. Uh, I mean, the documents or information that uh, the uh, top management needs to review and needs to make certain uh, uh, crucial decisions, which then are some outputs uh, to, to uh, let's say, to further, let's say, what, whatever needs to be done. And the same principle exists for both of these standards. So uh, you might actually do the um, management review, uh, maybe not at the same time, but using the same process, the, the same principle. Uh, as I was saying already, uh, you need to set up the objectives, uh, again, for both of these standards, I mean, for both of these systems, uh, both for quality management system and for information security management system, and you need to set the measurement in order to see if these objectives are met. Uh, of course, the, the, the objectives will be probably very different. So, for instance, for a quality management system, you will set, okay, we want to, I don't know, decrease the number of uh, complaints by, I don't know, 30%. Whereas in, in the information security management system, you might set the objective, you want to decrease the number of incidents uh, by, let's say, 15%. So uh, the objectives will be likely very different, but the system of setting them up, I mean, to, uh, of approving them, and then of measuring those, uh, uh, those uh, objectives will be probably very much the same. Um, and what is also similar is that uh, there uh, the, you can actually exclude uh, part of parts of the uh, standard. So as you know, in ISO 9001, you can exclude certain uh, clauses, whereas in ISO 27001, you can exclude some of the controls from the Annex A. And I'm not sure if you're familiar uh, enough with uh, ISO 27001, but ISO 27001 uh, has these main clauses, uh, they go from 0 to 10, the same as, as uh, ISO 9001, whereas uh, uh, clauses 4 to 10 are the ones that, uh, that, are, uh, uh, that are required uh, uh, for the, I mean, that are mandatory, you need to implement them if you want to uh, go for a certification. And uh, these, uh, uh, the structure of the clauses is the same as in, as in 9, uh, ISO 9001. This is, uh, uh, this is so-called high-level structure according to uh, ISO organization. Anyway, uh, what is different is that uh, ISO 27001 has this Annex A. Uh, this Annex A lists, uh, th this is basically a catalog of uh, 114 controls, security controls or safeguards. Uh, that you can implement. However, you don't need to implement all of these 114 controls. You can exclude certain of these uh, controls. So, uh, exclusion is possible in 27001 uh, uh, for these controls, but you, you cannot ex exclude anything from the uh, main uh, uh, parts of the standard, whereas in ISO 9001 you can exclude certain uh, clauses or sub-clauses from the main part of the standard. Good, so uh, these were the similarities. Now, uh, let's see the uh, differences. Um, so ISO uh, 27001, I mean, ISO 9001 has this concept of a risk assessment, but 
as I said, it's it's not as influential, it's not as as uh, crucial for for uh, QMS as is uh, 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 risk management. I mean, risk assessment and treatment for ISO 27001. So why is this uh, uh, risk management so important in uh, 27001? Uh, it is because uh, uh, once you finish the risk assessment and treatment, then you will actually know um, where are your potential problems, uh, which potential problems can happen, and which security controls you need to implement in order to address these risks. In other words, uh, the main, let's say, um, trigger, if I can use this word, the main uh, method for selecting the controls is the risk management. In other words, if there are no risks, you are not going to apply certain controls. If there are, uh, then you will. So this, this is, uh, in a nutshell, the, the um, I would say, uh, the, the, how, how the standard works. And uh, I would say the most important mechanism uh, within ISO 27001. So uh, ISO 9001, um, I mean, the quality manual, as, as you probably know, is not a mandatory document, but it's very, very common. It was mandatory in, in older revisions of uh, 9001, but it's not uh, in, the, in the latest revisions. Uh, but uh, there is no such thing in, in 27001. What uh, does exist in 27001, and, and this one is a mandatory document, this is statement of applicability. So uh, in quality manual, uh, I mean, there are different types of quality manuals, but very often you see simply uh, um, a list of all the clauses of the standard and basically, uh, a, let's say, a short description on, on how the company is addressing each of these clauses. Uh, whereas in statement of applicability, you have to list all of the 114 controls, and for each of these controls, you have to state whether they are applicable or not, and uh, uh, also what is their status and how you implemented those. And in a couple of seconds, I'll show you actually how this uh, how this document uh, looks like. Uh, uh, what, what is also different uh, is uh, that ISO 9001. Uh, one of the most important things that you will measure are actually customer complaints. Because obviously this is a kind of a reflection of, of your level of quality. Because if your quality, I mean, the better quality you have, uh, the less complaints you will have. However, this concept doesn't really exist in, in uh, 27,001 because you're not going to <laughs> measure customer complaints. What are you going to measure is definitely security incidents. And of course, as, as part of your security management, you want to have uh, 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 the, the, the as little uh, incidents as possible. Uh, so uh, again, not the same kind of, let's say, parallel uh, concepts. Now, uh, I promised to, to show you how this statement of applicability looks like, so let me open this document. And as you can see here, uh, this is the statement of applicability, um, I mean, as a document, as a template. Uh, I'm showing you this from our 27001 uh, documentation toolkit. So the first and second page are not so important, but what is important is really this, uh, this uh, table here. So as you can see here, uh, you have listed the uh, name of the, uh, sorry, the ID of the control, uh, the name of the control, and then you have these um, uh, different uh, uh, columns. So I can actually, let's me, let me browse here and let me just show you how to, let's say, fill out these controls for, let's say, teleworking, okay? So you said, uh, I mean, teleworking is uh, one of the controls listed in Annex A. So you can say here, applicability, yes. Uh, justification for selection would be, let's say, risks uh, uh, number, let's say, third, and, yeah, 20, let's say, eight, uh, and uh, number 33, okay, something like this. So you, you have to justify why did you select this uh, control and you refer to certain risks that you identified in uh, one step uh, earlier. Uh, control objectives uh, uh, here, you can list actually what you want to achieve with this control. So let's say reduce uh, the number, oops, uh, the number of uh, incidents of remote uh, workers, something like this. Uh, and then you say implementation method. Okay, so how you're, you're going to do this? So for instance, uh, okay, we already have some suggested documents here. So let's say mobile and uh, teleworking uh, policy uh, and status. So you can say status is uh, currently it's planned. So currently it's not implemented yet. Uh, but once you implement the, this control, then you will say simply implement it. Okay. So once you do this uh, for each and every of these 114 controls, you will have a very 
uh, exact picture of um, how far, I mean, uh, which controls you want to implement, uh, which are, what is their status, how far did you go, what you want to achieve with them, and so on. So it's, it's I would say, a very precise document uh, that helps you very, very much uh, control whatever you want to do with uh, uh, with the uh, your uh, ISO 27001 implementation. Good. Now let me go back to my slides, uh, and I have a question. So let me answer it right now, if I can. So Monica is asking, as far as I am aware, the ISO 9001 2015 requires also the risk assessment. So can you please explain in some example what is the difference uh, in risk assessment required by the ISO 9001 in comparing to 27001? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm not ISO 9001 uh, uh, expert, uh, but uh, uh, generally the, the biggest difference is that um, uh, in ISO 27001 everything revolves around uh, risk management. So you, you actually cannot uh, or you shouldn't be implementing any control without actually doing the risk assessment first because the risk assessment will tell you which controls are, are needed. So in other words, it doesn't make sense to do any of the security stuff between you actually do uh, a risk assessment. On the other hand, in ISO 9001, uh, you don't need to actually wait for the results of the uh, uh, risk management to, to implement all of your, uh, uh, let's say, core operating procedures like purchasing or, or production or, or sales or uh, whatever you, you decided that your, your core, core processes are. So this is the basic difference. Uh, the uh, risk management in ISO 9001, I mean in recent versions of, of 9001, is gaining in importance, but it's nowhere nearly, nearly close uh, as important as, uh, in, uh, as uh, risk management in ISO 27001. Good. Um, so let me go on to the next uh, slide. So uh, some implementation issues uh, that uh, you have to uh, be aware of. Uh, so, um, uh, of course, I mean, uh, the, the best thing is really to integrate ISMS, the Information Security Management System and Quality Management System in a single management system. Now, what does this mean, integrate? Uh, uh, basically, uh, this means that uh, you will use the same procedures uh, or the same, let's say, documents for different uh, uh, management systems. So as I mentioned, the internal audit procedure or I don't know, document control, these kind of things. In, in other words, you don't need two piles of paper, <laughs> you need only one pile of paper which will uh, do the job. And of course, uh, I'm not saying that you need to use paper documents, uh, by all means use, uh, if, if possible, use the, the documents in digital form. Uh, uh, what can help you is actually this uh, standard called PAS 99. It's, uh, uh, it speaks actually about integrated management. So this, this I mean, if you're really interested in this topic, you can you can get the standard, and uh, it will get, give you a much precise picture on what actually integrated management systems are all about. Uh, uh, there are also some other, let's say, connections between these standards. So, for instance, if you want to implement uh, ISO 9001 Clause 7.1.3, which is about infrastructure, uh, actually ISO 27001 is quite good uh, for doing this. So, uh, especially if you speak about IT infrastructure, I mean, uh, ISO 27001 really gives you a perfect, uh, let's say, overview of what needs to be done to, to secure and manage your uh, IT infrastructure. Um, and also, one thing about uh, uh, writing this top-level policy, I would not advise you to, to write uh, or to merge the quality policy and the information security policy because uh, their focus is very different. Uh, in, in, uh, in most cases, the actually audience is very different. Uh, for instance, uh, you might actually sh want to show your quality policy to, let's say, to anyone on your website, to, to your suppliers, to, you know. Uh, on the other hand, information security policy is, um, in most cases, an internal document which you don't want to show to anyone except your employees. So, yeah, it's really my advice that you do not uh, uh, merge these two uh, documents. Okay, uh, a couple of questions that I received <coughs> uh, in the last couple of minutes. So, uh, Frederick is asking, how frequent should we perform risk management for ISO 27001? Well, uh, you, you have to do it initially in the initial implementation, of course, to, to understand which controls are implemented, uh, sorry, which controls need to be implemented. 
uh, and uh, you have to review your risk uh, assessment uh, at least once a year. Um, so basically this is uh, something that needs to be done. Of course you have to review the risk uh, assessment more often if there are some bigger changes, like uh, you have a new location or, or new technology, these kind of things. Okay, Albert is asking, uh, when you do risk identification, uh, would you start with the 114 controls and elaborate on your risks or identify the risks using various techniques and associate identified risks with 114 controls? Definitely the, the second thing that you were mentioning uh, and definitely not the first one. So you should, you know, by no means start with the controls and then find which risks uh, would be related, no. You have to find which risks uh, 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 exist, and then uh, for those risks, uh, for those potential problems, you actually have to find the solutions, uh, uh, and solutions are actually the controls. Uh, there is this webinar uh, which explains the details of ISO 27001 implementation, uh, sorry, of ISO 27001 risk uh, uh, management, so I'll give you the link now. <coughs> Okay, so I'll send you this link now through this uh, chat window. So the uh, webinar is called uh, The Basics of Risk Assessment and Treatment According to ISO 27001. Uh, so you'll see it in a second. And uh, when speaking about this, you also have a webinar uh, which speaks about the main steps in ISO 27001 implementation. So let me find this. Um, Okay, just a second more. So here is the link to this other webinar which speaks about implementation steps. Good, Vladimir is asking, uh, the risk assessment of ISO 27001, does it speak about the organization or the people? Um, it doesn't actually mention any of these uh, items, however, you need to identify all the risks. And the methodology that I'm usually suggesting is that you list all the assets that you have. Uh, and these assets uh, includes uh, not only the, let's say, hardware and software and, I don't know, data and this kind of stuff. It also includes the, the people. Uh, because very often your people uh, are actually the source of the risk. So you have to list them as assets, I mean company assets, and then uh, do the risk assessment uh, on those, let's say, assets. And you will see the details in this webinar that I've uh, sent you the link to. Okay, uh, Jorgis is asking, objective must set for every control we implement? Uh, no, you do not have to do this. Uh, usually, especially smaller companies do not do this. They can actually uh, define uh, uh, objectives for um, uh, groups of controls or they, I mean, you, you don't have to, you don't need to, to have any kind of uh, objectives related directly contr to controls. You can have, let's say, simply uh, security processes and then uh, define uh, objectives for those uh, security processes. So you don't really have to go control by control or even groups of controls. And uh, Regwick is asking, please, how many times in the year for the management review sessions? Uh, I mean, once a year, this is the minimum, although I would say it's much better to do it more often. Okay, now uh, let me go to the roles. Um, uh, yeah, by the way, uh, before I move on into this, uh, into this um, uh, slide, uh, let me show you a poll. So uh, the poll question is, how should a QMS uh, management representative participate in ISO 27001 project? So what do you think? The, the quality management representative, should this person lead the project? I mean, lead ISO 27001 project or be a member of the uh, uh, project team for uh, ISO 27001 implementation? Or should uh, QMS representative uh, be uh, not be a member of the project team? Uh, um, but occasionally consult it or should not participate at all. So what do you think out of these four options, what would be, let's say, the, the best uh, way to do it? Okay, I'll wait a couple of seconds for you to answer. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think most of you have answered, so let me close the poll and share the results. So, um, as you can see, majority of you have answered that uh, this person should be a member, so that the QMS management representative should be a member of the uh, um, 
uh, of the project team for ISO 27000 implementation. So I would say this is uh, right uh, in majority of cases, but not in all cases. So let me go back to, let me close the poll and go back to my slide. Okay, so uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, skip these points and go to this uh, project team. So basically what happens, uh, if you implement ISO 27001 and you already implemented ISO 9001 previously, uh, typically in your project team, you will uh, want to have the same people uh, who are actually, who, who are part of the ISO 9001 implementation. Uh, first of all, uh, ISO 27001 is not only about IT. Because for instance, uh, you might have the, the best IT controls or IT security controls, but if someone from, your, let's say, your finance department does something stupid, uh, you know, no amount of technology will, will stop this, this uh, incident from happening. So it's not only about IT, it's all also about the business users uh, or the users from your business uh, parts of the company. So th this is why I'm suggesting that the members of the project team for ISO 27001 implementation should be both from the IT, IT side and from the business side. And when you speak about the business side, actually the best people are the, those same people that you had on board, I mean on, on the project team when you implemented ISO 9001. Because again, uh, if you are, let's say, a production company, uh, you will definitely want to have at least one person from the production uh, department or production facility. Also, you might have, I don't know, someone from the sales. Again, you will definitely want someone from sales department to be a part of your ISO 27000 uh, uh, implementation team because again, uh, in the sales department, you might have some very um, sensitive inf information that you don't want uh, to be leaked. So, this is about the project team. Now, uh, to come to the point of, of this uh, um, survey, as the, the poll that I've sh uh, shown you. So, uh, of course, uh, if you have the QMS representative, uh, then it's really good to have this person also as the uh, part of the, of the uh, ISO 27001 project team. Uh, in some cases, actually, you will have the same person who was uh, uh, leading the ISO 9001 project and, and is now the QMS representative, that this same person is actually leading the ISO 27001 impl implementation. Now, in which cases this can happen, uh, so for instance, if you're, let's say, a, a, a software company and you have something like, let's say, 20 employees, then, I mean, uh, there are good chances that this QMS representative is already a software developer because probably you don't have like a dedicated uh, quality management uh, professional. So you will have, a, let's say, head of, let's say, development department or someone who is the QMS representative. And I mean, this person already knows enough uh, about, let's say, IT or security that this same person can actually lead the ISO 27001 project as well. So, uh, uh, the point is, in smaller uh, tech companies, uh, you might have the same person who is going to be both the quality manager and security manager. Okay, uh, now just to go back to these uh, points, so QMS management representative, okay, this is something that, uh, this is the person that was leading the ISO 9001 project. In ISO, in security world, this is usually the CISO. CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, or only Security Officer, or something like this. There are many, let's say, variations of, of this uh, uh, of this term, but uh, basically this is the usually the, the main guy in security. Now, top management and sponsor, uh, it's good to have, uh, if you have a sponsor from the top management for ISO 9001, it's good to have the same person as a sponsor for ISO 27001. Why? Because this person will know, uh, you know, what you did well and, and how this uh, ISO 9001 project helped your company. So it's good to have this, this person as a sponsor for 27001 as well. Okay, uh, good. Now, uh, let me go on to the next slide. <laughs> Okay, some top management issues. So uh, if you already have uh, QMS implemented, uh, uh, the top management will actually understand not only the benefit, but the benefits, but also the drawbacks, the bad things uh, about ISMS. So, you know, if, if you really uh, did a great job with ISO 9001, it will be much easier for you to implement ISO 27001 as well, because you will convince your top management uh, in an easier way. 
but also the opposite is true. You know, if you if you did a mess with ISO 9001, it's better not to try with ISO 27001 because you know it's it's you're probably not going not going to get any support. So you know it's much easy, it's much better than to try to fix a QMS before actually starting with with uh, uh, 27001. Okay, uh, as I said earlier, the management review can be done at the same time or if not exactly at the same time using the same uh, process at least. And uh, a, setting, a system for setting the objectives and measuring can be the same, which is for the top management very easy because, uh, I mean, it's, it's convenient for them because they don't need to, you know, view two completely different set of data. They can use, uh, you know, they can view the, you can, they can use some kind of same interface for, you know, uh, watching the the objectives and the fulfillment of uh, sec uh, security objectives and and uh, quality management objectives, it's easier for them, and th this is why it's important from the top management perspective. Okay, right uh, now let me um, uh, go to the slide about implementing both the standards in parallel. So let's say that uh, you have uh, that you decided that you want to implement both. Uh, um, 27,001 and 9,001 at the same time. So it's a bit more difficult than going one after another, but it's doable. And I'll show you basically what are the major steps. So you should basically start uh, uh, a big project. I mean, the, the joint project of, of these two uh, management systems by defining the, the top level objectives, by defining these top level uh, policies and by defining the rules for, for document management. Okay, so this is what you do for both of these standards, uh, I would say, at the same time. And then at that point of, uh, in this point of time, once you're finished with this, then you have to actually separate uh, two tracks of projects for uh, ISO, 9, 000, ISO 27001 and for ISO 9001. So uh, basically this is where uh, separately for 27001, you will do the uh, risk assessment and then you will start implementing the controls from the NXA. Because uh, if you remember, I, I mentioned that this is really different from 9001. And uh, uh, on the 9001 side, you will basically start uh, implementing or documenting the, the core operating procedures. Again, this is usually different uh, or it usually doesn't have uh, um, uh, very much to do with, with these security processes. So uh, I would say these two things can be done uh, in parallel. And once these two separate tracks are finished, then you can actually uh, conclude your projects by, by uh, doing the internal audit, uh, management reviews, and, and corrective actions. Again, you can uh, do these things together for 27001 and uh, ISO 9001. So this is very, I would say, simplified, uh, let's say, way to do it. Uh, of course, many of these uh, items that I've displayed here have many more steps uh, in them. But uh, I've already given you a couple of um, uh, links to, to other webinars which actually explains, uh, explain these uh, steps in the implementation. Uh, yeah, and right, uh, I mean, if you if intend to implement any of these uh, standards, we have uh, all the documentation uh, templates for any of these, for, so for, for either 27001 or ISO 9001, so we call these uh, uh, templates, uh, uh, we have sets of templates, we call them ISO 27001 documentation toolkit and also ISO 9001 uh, documentation toolkit. Good. Now, uh, a little bit about the uh, certification. So, what uh, you can actually, if you implemented both of these standards, what you can do is so-called integrated uh, audit. And uh, what's good about it is that actually you will save time and money. Because, for instance, uh, if you went uh, for separate ISO 9001 audit and separate uh, 27001 audit, uh, the auditor, uh, let's say, might take something like uh, seven or let's say, let's say that they, take, they will take 10 uh, man days for auditing 9001 and then again uh, 10 man days uh, for auditing 27001. So in total you would pay 20 uh, man days uh, for a certification auditor. If you go for uh, integrated audit, 
you're not going to pay them for 20 men days, you will pay them for, let's say, 15 men days. Because uh, obviously the, the auditor doesn't need to audit, you know, the document control twice because <laughs> it's, it's common for both of these uh, uh, standards. Uh, so th this is why uh, he here comes this uh, savings uh, uh, for integrated audit. So this is something you can do. And by the way, you should uh, be looking for certification audits, uh, certification uh, bodies which can actually both uh, audit both of these standards so that you don't have to uh, hire two separate uh, certification bodies. Good, good. now uh, let me go now to this uh, slide which speaks about um, what are the greatest challenges with uh, ISO 27001. Uh, and basically the question was uh, what do you think are the biggest challenges in 27,000 implementation once you know the details of uh, ISO 9001. And uh, I received uh, uh, numerous of your inputs and I try to, well, let's say, pick uh, the five that are most uh, attractive. So so here they are. So I'll, I'll go through each and every of these and, and give you my, let's say, feedback on what I think uh, how you should be addressing this. So um, regarding uh, the first question or the first, uh, let's say, challenge is um, it says ISO 27001 specifics. So one cannot let himself to be misled by, by uh, all ISO 9001 habits. Uh, I mean, th this is true, uh, but the most important thing is to remember that uh, th this uh, risk management, which has the central part. So you have to focus on, on doing this uh, risk management uh, correctly, and you have to understand that all these security controls that uh, uh, need to be implemented further on, that they depend on the results of the risk management. And once you understand this logic, then everything is much, much easier. And uh, then you are not going to get confused uh, with ISO 9001 because you, you have this uh, uh, major logic or main logic from uh, 27001. Uh, by the way, of course, as I've shown you, there are many good things you can use from ISO 9001, the uh, document control, the internal audit, uh, you know, all of these things. Uh, but uh, again, uh, when it comes to security controls, you have to think in terms of risks. Okay, uh, second challenge was since, al since almost all programs are available now on the internet, how will ISO 9001 processes protect or secure one's company data or property? So, um, I'm not sure if I understand this, uh, uh, let's say, um, challenge correctly, but uh, if I understood well, this person was saying, okay, we already have uh, ISO 9001 processes. Now, how are we going to protect uh, uh, the data or property with those ISO 9001 processes? Well, uh, I mean, you're not going to use these ISO 9001 uh, processes uh, for protection. You're going to do the risk assessment, and then uh, once you do the risk assessment, you will find out which controls you need to implement in order to uh, uh, protect the data or, or the property. So it's not directly, it doesn't have to be directly related to these processes. So in some cases, you might include some additional steps within these processes to make the, to do the protection. For instance, in the I know, some processes which which uh, I mean ISO, uh, operating procedures that you have uh, for uh, ISO 9001, you might include so let's say a step which uh, speaks about how to back up your data. So this would be one let's say method of protection. But uh, then again, you would might do a completely separate. Uh, uh, security controls which are not related to your uh, operating procedures. For instance, you might uh, create a access control policy where you define exactly who, who, who has the authority to allow the access to, let's say, new information systems or existing information systems or, let's say, for new employees. And this access control policy does not to, need to be connected directly to any of these uh, operating uh, procedures. Good. Uh, one of the challenges was also what additional systems and documents are required for 27001 over and above ISO 9001. So I already mentioned the, the risk management, uh, but I can sh actually show you uh, the list of mandatory documents for um, ISO 27001. So just give me a second, I'll, I'll send you the uh, link. <clears throat> Okay, so um, 
you'll see it in a second uh, through this uh, chat window. So basically, these are the documents that are mandatory for 27001, and you will see the that some already are are implemented because of uh, uh, 9001. Uh, the others you you will have to create uh, as a new. Uh, now, ISO 27001 does not uh, define which systems, technical systems, you need to use. So it doesn't tell you, look, you have, you need to apply, I don't know, certain type of uh, backup or certain type type of antivirus. It doesn't say anything like this. <clears throat> it only tells you, look, you have to assess the risks, and if there are risks related to, let's say, viruses, then you, as a company, have to decide how to fight these viruses. So the standard, I mean, 27001 does not tell you which technology to use. It is really up to you to choose. Okay, uh, one of the greatest challenges was listing the assets and risk assessment methodology. So, I mean, uh, it might seem difficult, but actually listing the assets is uh, rather easy. You simply, you know, take a look around you, what you're using, and simply, you know, make a list. So <laughs> it's really as, as easy as it is. Of course, you can use certain catalogs which uh, help you speed up, uh, speed up the process. And of course, this is something that we offer as uh, also as part of our toolkit. And uh, I mean, this risk assessment methodology, uh, I mean, it can get very complicated. Uh, but I mean, uh, there are, let's say, met uh, there, there are ways to simplify this me methodology so that you can actually do it in a, in a very easy way. And uh, uh, if, you, if you take a look at this uh, webinar, we, uh, my webinar, which speaks about the, the risk assessment, uh, you will see there how this is done. Okay, um, also get a challenge. one of the challenges is applicable legal regulatory requirements related to uh, ISO 27001 compliance. So uh, what is important to know is that you have to identify all the uh, legal and regulatory requirements uh, related to information security. And uh, actually there is a page on our website which can help you with this, so just give me a second. Okay, so um, uh, you'll see in this link that I've uh, uh, sent you, you'll see actually a list of uh, laws and regulations uh, uh, for information security uh, per country. Now, this is not official, so you have to be aware that uh, this is not, I would say, a definite list, uh, but, uh, you know, it can give you some kind of a, a head start. You know, you, you'll start, you will know where to start researching when, when uh, listing the applicable laws and regulations. Good, so uh, these were the greatest uh, challenges. Now let me go to conclusions and then uh, uh, go to the Q&A uh, session. So, uh, f well, definitely a conclusion is that, uh, as you see, ISO 9001 and uh, 27001 have, have very similar, what I like to call a core management system. By core management system, I mean the control documents, internal audits, human resources management, uh, corrective actions, uh, these kind of things. So this part is the same. And of course, uh, if possible, you should uh, definitely uh, use it. Uh, um, uh, I mean, use the same documents for, for both of the standards. And yes, uh, ISO 9001 is a very good foundation for uh, ISO 27001 implementation, meaning that you can actually save money and time when, when uh, 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 doing it properly. Uh, so, as I mentioned, you know, this one-hour webinar was intended to give you a broad picture on, on uh, how you can actually use ISO 9001 for the implementation of uh, 27001. And in this uh, short time frame, it really wasn't possible to go into the, the implementation details of uh, each and every standard. And for, uh, please do take a look uh, uh, at these other webinars that I've given you the link uh, for that purpose. Um, okay, so uh, again, uh, once you finish this, uh, when you uh, once you close this webinar, you will see a short survey. So uh, please do spend a minute to, to fill it in. And this would be all. Thank you very much for your participation, and uh, I hope you have uh, enjoyed this webinar. Have a nice day. On behalf of Soft Expert, thank you for the presence of everyone who participated in this event. If you have any questions, please contact the presenter via email. To see other webinars, ebooks, and white papers on this subject, please visit our website at www.softexpert.com. Find out more about SoftExpert solutions for business compliance, innovation, and digital transformation. Thanks for listening. See you next time.